I would, I would clap too. <laughs> So happy Tuesday, everyone. Tonight, let's take a trip back in time, all the way back to the summer of 2023. That's when the mysterious figure known as President Biden established the first ever Office of Climate Change and Health Equity, a new bureaucracy deep within the Department of Health and Human Services. Well, at least health and human services belong together, but climate change and health equity might as well be the Office of Brains and Joy Behar. <laughs> So why bring this up now? Well, the Office of Climate Change and Health Equity, or OUCHI, <laughs> rhymes with Fauci, wants to scold you. And the scold in charge is America's Assistant Secretary for Health, Admiral Rachel Levine. Take a look. Hello, I'm Admiral Rachel Levine. This Black <laughs> History Month, I'm pleased to partner with OMH in advancing better health through better understanding for black communities. <laughs> Climate change is having a disproportionate effect on the physical and mental health of black communities. Black Americans are more likely than white Americans to live in areas and housing that increase their susceptibility to climate-related health issues. And 65% of black Americans report feeling anxious about climate change's impact. Why is it when I see her, I get hungry for Quaker oats? <laughs> anyway, that was like a Saturday Night Live sketch, except I nearly laughed. <laughs> It makes me wonder, how long do you have to be at sea for Admiral Levine to start looking good? <laughs> now, maybe it's true that an apple a day might keep the doctor away, but one located in a woman's neck, it raises a few flags. Oh my God. But now Levine is pushing a government program that stirs up racial discord, wasting money to fit a crisis that doesn't exist. And you're funding this <laughs> Seriously, blacks are more affected by climate do rain clouds follow black people around like in a Charlie Brown cartoon? <laughs> if a black guy, an Asian guy, and a Hispanic guy are outside in the rain, does only one of them get wet? There aren't a lot of tsunamis raging through Southside Chicago or Philly, though they could use one to wash away the needles and the bloodstains. But minorities in urban areas have bigger worries than the weather. It's not hail, unless you mean hail of gunfire. And those bullets aren't coming from climate deniers or white racists. But I'm sure if a tsunami did rage through Chicago, Jesse Smollett would say two white guys stole his galoshes. <laughs> As for blacks feeling anxious about climate change, join the club. Dems always cite statistics about Americans being scared of their propaganda as if it's scientific proof of that propaganda. It's like how tense Joe Mackey gets every time I scream, you're fired. <laughs> But still, there you are. <laughs> but if you spend 30 years convincing people the weather is going to kill them, some folks are going to believe it. It's the same with preventing trans surgery among kids. Do that and you kill ki kids, says the admiral. Seriously, how am I supposed to take health advice from Levine, who claims that restricting gender surgery costs the lives of young people? Science says no. A new long-term study finds that gender dysphoria is not a significant cause of suicide in adolescence. Furthermore, long-term Swedish studies found that post-op transgender people have a considerably higher risk of suicidal behavior than the general population. In other words, the idea that kids will kill themselves if they're not allowed to transition is a lie created to keep us from raising concerns. No wonder some hospitals have become jiffy lubes for gender surgery. But that's what science is now, where junk science is pushed by the so-called experts on our dime, and we're not supposed to say a peep or we'll be canceled. Then again, we live in a country where the guy in charge rubs gold bond medicated powder on his gums and denture cream on his nuts because he can't remember which is which. <laughs> But here's a clue. According to a Stanford study, over the past 20 years, the medical profession has gone from 60% Republican to 80% Democrat. No wonder our medical system has gone totally woke. Examples are everywhere. Earlier this month, UC San Francisco inv invited Dante King, a professor of medical education, whatever that is, to lecture students about how white people are psychopaths, when it's really just cat tiff. <laughs> Whites are psychopaths, and their behavior represents an underlying biologically transmitted pro proclivity with roots deep in their evolutionary history. I think whites are psychopathic. I think there are many lies. The level of lying that white people do 
that has started the, since colonialism. Yeah. We're just used to it. Imagine if a white guy was saying that about blacks. Then there was John Hopkins Chief Diversity Officer Sherita Golden sending out a mass email blasting her colleagues for being white, able-bodied, heterosexual, male, or English-speaking. You know, a doctor used to tell you to turn your head and cough. Now she just grabs your stones and squeezes till you say you're sorry. <laughs> I might ask for that. <laughs> You got to ask yourself, who's got the privilege these days if all those privileged folks are the ones who have to sit there and get yelled at? Isn't the person wagging her finger at you, the one you're not supposed to talk back to or else you're racist? Isn't she the one with all the privilege? Last November, the American Psychiatric Association published a textbook titled Gender Affirming Psychiatric Care, which noted, quote, scientific neutrality is a fallacy. The textbook uses the word oppress 60 times, victim 63 times, intersectional 62 times, and queer 83 times. That's not a textbook, it's an Antifa rally. And now you got applications for our country's med schools demanding diversity statements and calls for schools to remove the MCAT admission test as a requirement. Why not remove the requirements for surgeons to wash their hands or remove the glove requirement for prostate exams? <laughs> You don't have to be smart to sterilize kids. You just have to follow orders. And this madness isn't just here. British health officials, this is crazy, now claim that breast milk produced by trans women, i.e. dudes, after taking a bunch of drugs and hormones to produce it, is as healthy for babies as milk from a genetic female. <laughs> and that's if you don't choke on the chest hair. <laughs> anyway, it's enough to make anyone lactose intolerant. But what does any of this crap have to do with medicine? It doesn't. Our health is now the next target for identity-based ideology. When the point is science is what it is, not what activists tell you it is. It's illogical and it puts everyone in danger. And if you end up with a woke doctor, the next medical professional you might see is the coroner. Let's welcome tonight's guest. Richard Pryor, George Carlin, Sam Kinison, just a few comedians happy they're dead and don't have to hear his act. Writer and comedian Joe Mackey. I wrote that. <laughs> she talks so fast, her tongue has to wear a helmet. Host of the Fox <laughs> True Crime Podcast, Emily Campagno. <laughs> He spent 22 months in prison, which is why he feels right at home here. Author of The Wolf of Wall Street and the new book, The Wolf of Investing, Jordan Belfort. She's like a thumbtack, sharp and small, but hurts when you sit on her. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. Joe, ever since your parents signed a do not resuscitate order <laughs> the day you were born, oh my God. you've never been, you've never trusted the medical establishment. Is that correct? Part, <laughs> partially, Greg. Uh, I do want to be resuscitated because I am a members only model. <laughs> so life is worth living. But is that but a new members only jacket? It's a new members only jacket. I look good. So even if you do fire me, I've got uh, something to fall back on. <laughs> But I'll say this, Greg, there are two, two big issues I have with this whole thing. One, uh, if uh, white people are psychopaths, I wouldn't care at all that he said that because I'd be a psychopath. Right. Yeah. I worry about what people think of me all the time, you know? I worry that women only want me because of my body. <laughs> <laughs> and the other problem with this is that I have a number of black acquaintances mm -hmm. and... Uh, <laughs> That's not the reason they go to the doctor, you know? They don't go to the doctor and they're like, white people are psychopaths. And they're like, oh my God, you're burning up. It must be climate change. <laughs> Let's get you addicted to pills and give you a really confusing bill. <laughs> I'm glad you have a number of black acquaintances. <laughs> Emily, uh, I used to be, I didn't, we didn't worry too much about the woke stuff because it was self-contained in the academic zoo. Like, as long as it stayed there, it was fine. But when it leaks into, like, the 
airline industry where your life depends on it or the medical industry where your life depends on it. It's scary, no? It's frightening. At the end of the day, when people say that they care about levels of equity and whatnot, it's really not in that hands-on approach of who's actually conducting the surgery of your heart. You know, at the end of the day, you just want who is the best at heart surgery. That's all I care about. You don't care about the levels of equity they had to go through. Do you know who's the best at heart surgery? Who? Psychopaths. <laughs> Great. Sign me up then. I have no problem with it. The problem I have is with where my tax dollars are going and where yeah. this occupant of the White House is putting our tax dollars, right? The, the admiral you cited earlier, Levine, she said the highest priority of the White House is affirming gender care, gender affirming care for youth. What does that look like? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that affirmation actually mean? come down to, because what I know is while this administration is touting the, the disproportionate effects on black and brown people, 20% of Americans, are, only 20, are satisfied with the state of the nation. And that 20% means all Americans, right? It, it doesn't matter about their skin color. And yet this administration keeps hammering people into boxes, being like, no, 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 you're black, so you have to care about climate change. Mm -hmm. And you're Hispanic, so you have to care about this. But at the end of the day, every American, regardless of skin color, thinks this economy and this president sucks. And no amount of them shoving down our throat, box checking is going to make us care yeah. anymore. They're putting us into boxes, i.e. coffins. That's right. Yes. Wait, can we say one more thing about that? The, as the, long as you don't say at the end of the day. I won't, I promise. Okay. But the chest feeding thing? Yeah. The, you know those commercials where they tell you about the like positive effects of drugs and then really fast someone says like, and then it causes, you know, death imminently. <laughs> that, it was at the end of the article, it was like, and it will transmit to the baby and it causes heart issues yeah. for the baby. But don't worry, this was still approved <laughs> by this organization. Like that whatever group yeah. wants this to happen. They were like, it says it's fine. But yeah. don't worry about the baby. You got to deny the science in order to stick to the ideology. Jordan, cool. welcome to the show. Congrats on the new book, The Wolf oh, of <laughs> Investing. Should we not be doing any investing in the health industry for the long, for the short term? Yeah. I'll tell you, when I, you know, watch the Rachel Levine or listen to the guy who's talking about, you know, mm -hmm. gender and, and, and uh, or color your skin and you're a psychopath, do they really believe this <laughs> they're saying? Mm -hmm. It seems to me there's no way they could possibly believe it in their own hearts. I think, I think Americans and most of the world is a pretty good <laughs> sector, and I think that when you hear things like this, they're just so patently ridiculous. They defy logic on every single level. And what it really is to me, it's, it's like this giant head fake. Like, we're nice people. We believe in diversity, equity, and inclusion so we can keep ripping your eyeballs out and raping and pillaging the village while we go about being good people. So to me, it's like it's all a head fake and it's nonsense. And I think people know that. Yeah, I think like corporations get into this DEI stuff so that could justify whatever weird stuff they're doing yeah, in the back they're good room. People. But then they don't want you to point it out. So they they accuse you of being racist, homophobic if you say this is <laughs> that's why people don't say it. Not, they don't I, say yeah. it's I always say I'm prejudiced against two groups of people. Stupid people and lazy people. Mm -hmm. Everyone else I'm equal, I don't care about. But yeah. those are my prejudices, <laughs> well, you know? You won't like Joe Mackey then. Oh. <laughs> that was unnecessary, and I almost apologize. <laughs> Kat, uh, how did you feel about being, you know, being called psychopathic? That's probably one of the nicer things you've been called by this uh, professor of medicine. Or by you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I honestly, I'm almost impressed that he got that gig with that material. <laughs> I mean, it was, I looked him up on Twitter, I think it was him, he had like less than 500 followers, I don't know. The whole thing <laughs> felt like really manifesto-y to me. Uh, it felt like maybe, you know what it reminded me of? Of like, the, this open mic night that I used to go to at, the, at a bar in the East Village, mm -hmm. <laughs> where towards the end of the night, like some of the bums would start wandering in right. <laughs> and just start like spouting stuff. I mean, I honestly, I, I can't even be offended by it because it's just like, he's like, I was like, okay, buddy. Like that's really kind of what it elicits from me. It's nonsense. I kind of wish I had the whole, I got to find if they had the whole thing recorded to see what happened in the Q and A. <laughs> Like, did any of the students, like, raise your hand and go, hi, I'm white, uh, what's your proof for me being psychopathic? I bet nobody did. No. no. We reached no. out, Fox reached out, and he, he cited 1800s Supreme Court cases as, like, fodder for his drivel. And keep in mind that conservative speakers are axed out of UC Davis and UC Berkeley, but UC San Francisco lets this guy in. Yeah, it's more like UC nothing. 
Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.